Good evening, and welcome to the September 19, 2017 meeting of the Floors and City Council. The Weeblows Cub Scout Pack from 829 are in the audience. Would you like to come up and lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> I, I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Lee? Here. Jones? Here. Egan? Here. Caputa? Here. Shildroth? Here. Hanke? Here. Pagano? Here. Parson? Here. Siam? Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to the meeting minutes of August 28th, 2017? Hearing none, Councilman Lee moves to approve the minutes, seconded by Mr. Parson. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The meeting minutes are approved. Mayor? Thank you, Madam President. Um, when I was a uh, city engineer, we lost uh, public works director Joe Kiefer. He was 38. And I remember how profound that was on me as his subordinate. And today at our department he head meeting, theater director Sean Robinson shared some sad news that, uh, and he, his grief reminded me of my own from 1977. I told Sean that I would reflect on his loss of both a friend and a colleague. Our theater community and that of the St. Louis region is burdened with a heavy heart upon the passing of stage actor Jeffrey Lloyd. These are images of Jeffrey on the screen performing at our theater. He was an active member of the Hawthorne Players and many other community performing arts productions. He was a star on the Florissant stage in more than a dozen different productions, including the Hawthorne productions of Carousel and Hairspray. The images that you see were taken during the performance of Carousel in 2015. He was one who stood out and we remembered and talked about after each performance that he starred in. He could sing and he could dance. He could make us chuckle or laugh out loud as a cheerful character. He could make us uncomfortable or even fearful when playing the villain. Over the past eight years, Jeff graced our stage over 12 different productions. He'll be finally remembered by our theater patrons. Uh, Jeff set the, set the bar high and leaped over it. He passed into the next life at the young age of 39. The next item on the agenda is hearing from citizens. This is a time to speak to the council on any issue, not necessarily on the agenda this evening for three minutes. Please remember that this is not a question and answer period, but we would be happy to stay after and speak with any of you. John Engelmeyer. Good evening, please state your name and address. John Engelmeyer, 1281 Graham Road. I wish the chairs were back up in front of the city council, but I guess that's not gonna happen this year. In a meeting of June 12th of 17, line 35 and 36 of the minutes indicated that I want a transparency about the Weber building. Tonight was one of those opportunities to listen to the discussion. I appreciate you moving the, the meeting out of the conference room onto the council chambers. Thank you, Mrs. Pagano, Karen Goodwin. Last week we had a Ward 5 and 7 meeting. It was one of the best Ward meetings that I've attended in many, many times. The open discussion, the questions from the floor, and the answers and responses. Ms. Pagano, you did a great job of organization 
and in terms of handling the questions and the crowd with all the many questions they had. It was very intriguing. Although, in that particular meeting, as well as earlier that day, the senior breakfast, not once was the, the Weber building discussed or, or with the citizens were informed about the building. We see a sign on the street that says, these receipt repairs are done by the approval of the tax. We see a sign there. On the Weber building, there's no sign to indicate that this is the new Justice Center. And after listening to this evening, I can understand why. What an embarrassment. We have the Weber gate now, and about 11 days ago, in the Post-Dispatch was an issue. Now we have Schneider gate. So we got two issues that are coming before me as a citizen that I'm appalled with. Hearing the numbers tonight and tomorrow night I'll attend, I hope that there's a distribution of the information concerning the building to all attended. In Ward 7, uh, it was brought to my attention that next door is a great website for our community and particularly my ward. I, uh, at this point here in the closing of my statement today, I, uh, I want to thank uh, Ken Gubin for your efforts and, uh, and my ever ending apparently emails. Thank you and Jackie, thank you. Thank you. Paul Young. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Mayor. Please no take your name and address, please. Mr. Could, that's kind of getting old. <laughs> Mr. Young, uh, no, no more jokes? No. Well, could uh, you state your name and address, please? Yes, Paul Thank Young, you. 525 Malanfi, Florence, Missouri, 63031. Thank you. Uh, not to beat an old horse, but uh, the speeding up and down uh, Patterson and Malanfi Lane, it's getting more dangerous. My wife likes to back, and it's easier for her to back the vehicle in and drive out forward and it's easier for her to do that it's getting more and more dangerous you know it seems like everybody's just in such, such a rush uh, maybe I notice it more because I'm uh, disabled but uh, anyway uh, I just want to also uh, give a shout out to the uh, all law all law enforcement especially the Florida police um, I think they're all doing an outstanding job and it's times like these right now that we need to stand behind them because uh, I, I know firsthand what it's like to carry a gun for a living, and it's not easy. It is, you know, <clears throat> it's easy to second guess uh, Monday morning quarterback, but when you, you know, you're that person wearing the weapon, and you gotta make that split second decision, you know, it's easy for people to second guess you. You know, say, well, you should've done that, you should've done that, you know, should've just shot him in the leg. You're not trained as a police officer, or even armed security to shoot people in the leg. I mean, again, not, you know, it's easy to second guess what police officers are doing. I, first, I have firsthand experience doing law enforcement, even though it's on a smaller scale. I still carried a gun for a living. And I still had, unfortunately, drawn my weapon several times. Thank God I didn't have to shoot anybody. But I know what it's like to, you know, uh, try and enforce rules and regulations and the law, and it's never easy. It's never easy. And I just want to give a big shout out to all law enforcement, especially our Florida police officers. They've got a no-win situation, and I say God bless each and every one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Hollows. Good evening. Please state your name and address. My name is Brian Hallows, 695 Mescalero Court, apartment oh. 4. About six years ago, my wife Kim and I moved city of Florence. It's the best move we ever made. We plan to live and die the rest of our lives here. You've got a wonderful city. You should be very proud of A year ago, Joe Egan approached me. A year ago, Joe Egan approached me and asked me if I would consider serving on the Disability Commission here in Florence. I have graciously done that and enjoyed my time very much there. On September 3rd this year, my wife had an issue. She's a guide dog user. She's sitting right back there in the front row. Her name's Kim. Her dog's name is Carrie. Carrie joined us in October of last year. On the 3rd of September, she had an issue, though, where her dog was aggressively pursued while she was out doing her business in the morning, making her 
regular morning run, <laughs> was pursued by what we presume to be a pit bull. Dog was off leash and to our knowledge had no collar. Aggressively pursued Carrie. Kim was trained with her dog that when an issue like this comes up, you are to drop the leash immediately because that puts the handler in danger. That is exactly what she did. When she returned to the house, we contacted animal control. After she gathered up Carrie again, we contacted animal control and they came out, took the report, went. Kim knew who the lady was because she heard her yell at the dog that, um, to come back after the dog had pursued our dog. But um, when animal control came out, they talked to Kim first of all. Then Kim showed them where the dog was from and because she knew what apartment it had come from because of the lady's voice and heard where the lady's voice came from. And they talked to the lady and then they came back and informed us that Carrie was considered a dog at large because she was not in her handler's control at the time. This, um, this issue, as we pursued it, we learned that there's no ordinance that we can find in the city of Florissant that protects service dogs or guide dogs. We're going to be residents here for a long time, so this is something that we would sincerely like to see the council look at and possibly pursue in the future. Joe's been very helpful to us with this issue, contacting us back and forth. Hadn't heard from him in a few days, though. So I understand he's been a very busy man the last few days, though. So, But um, we're very concerned with this issue, and we feel it's something that the council should look at. The way, um, like I said, Kim was told that the dog was considered a dog at large, and we would like to see the individuals at the animal control be spoken to about this and possibly have some in-service training which Kim would be willing to work with them with her and her dog if, if they were interested in doing that. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Egan. Real, real quick, Brian. Um, I did to speak again with Mr. Jurels over the weekend. He was researching the issue, and one of us will get back a hold of you the next day or so, and you're correct. I've been a little bit busy. I have not returned your, your last email that I got from you. I did read it, but I have not returned it yet, and you'll get that tomorrow the next day, okay? Thank you, Joe. All right, thank you. The next item on the agenda is communications, of which there are none, and we will move to public hearings. We have public hearing number 1707021. A public hearing will be held by the Florissant City Council in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue St. Francois, Florissant, Missouri on Tuesday, September 19th, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. To rezone for Darren Tucker, the property located at 22 Flower Ridge Lane from R4 Single Family Dwelling District to R6 Multiple Family Dwelling District to allow for a construction of a duplex. Citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs should contact the city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839-7630 or TDD 839-5142. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darren Tucker. Uh, I reside here in Florissant at 1365 Knight Drive. And I'm here to uh, ask for a rezoning of the property at 22 Flower Ridge. Uh, Mr. Uh, Tucker, you're going to either have to pull that microphone closer to you or, yeah, or uh, hold it in whichever is easier for you. Um, I'd like to back up this a little bit before I get into the details of the property, but I want to explain to you um, actually how I got <clears throat> an interest in the property from the get-go. Um, I'm here with my wife, Julie, and my youngest son, Austin, and my mother and father-in-law, uh, Denny and Rose Callahan and also a good friend, uh, Michael Fallon. Uh, <clears throat> they're here to support me. Um, my interest came um, because Julia's grandparents have an apartment complex at the corner of uh, Rosetta and Thompson. And if, if you're familiar with the area, uh, it's one of the nicest apartment complexes on that area. And I'm, I'm presently the manager of that property as well. Uh, the problem came, um, my, the interest in the property came a problem more than an interest to actually go and buy the property to build on it. And I got some pictures here to kind of start out showing what my problem was at, from the beginning. And 
this is uh, a uh, building that's on the lot that joins the apartment complex. It's all together uh, with it. Yeah, yeah, you want to flip it? I'm sorry. Sideways. Towards you. There you go. There you go. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a little bit nervous, sorry. Uh, but uh, the trees you see behind the building were the actual problem. And uh, at one point in time, I had to have some uh, guys come in and cut those tree limbs uh, because they were going to come down on the uh, building that we have there on the property. Uh, so that, that kind of became my interest in 22 Flower Ridge because it was more of a problem than anything else. And uh, not knowing the situation of the previous owner, um, but, uh, you know, if he couldn't keep the property up or what was the problem, but uh, I couldn't get any help to get those trees cut. So uh, as time rolled on, um, the, the house uh, that was on that property, uh, the story I have it is the man uh, took his own life and blew the house up. And that's the story I've got from all the people who live in that area. And um, then it became to a point where I didn't know who to contact on any existing problems I had with the property. So within about two years or so, it finally came up for sale, and then I actually bid on the property and bought the property. Um, I'd like to show you now some before and after pictures of the property. I've been working on this property about two years, cleaning it up, and it's been, I mean, I've labored on this property after work, weekends, I can't tell you how many hours I've been on working on this property, but here's some pictures. There you go. <laughs> As you can see, this is this is standing on the property, looking. Uh, you can see the see the shed back there, like on the on the left. That's the shed I showed you before, on Paul and Laverne's lot. Okay, I'm on 22 Flower Ridge right now. Okay, that's some of the some of the bushes that were there before. And this is to the side. If I'm looking at that one on the left, this all was on the right. Is this basically about a 30 foot long jungle all around that whole perimeter of that, of that property, okay? Today, after two years of labor, that's what it looks like now. So you can see I've spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of money, and clean this place up. So, like I said, the, the first, first interest was actually trying to clean the place up to protect my wife's grandparents' property. And then uh, after that, it became a, an investment. And so now I wanted to build something on the property. And uh, my mom lives in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and she's wanting to move back home. And one of my interests was to maybe build a home for my mom. So I thought, well, why not build a duplex instead? A way to, to provide an income, but not, not just an income, but also provide a home for someone else that's looking for a nice, nice home. So my goal was to build a nice, very nice quality, good quality uh, duplex home. Not an apartment complex, but a duplex home. Okay, so my property right now joins um, all the apartment complexes on Thompson. So it's not like I'm, inter I'm inter you know, trying to in put something in that area that's foreign to, you know, it's not like it's, it's a total residential area and I'm trying to put a, uh, an apartment complex in the middle of the residential area. I'm trying to put something really that since the property is right next to it, why not allow me to go ahead and put a duplex right there? So um, that's, that became my interest. So I came to the planning and zoning commission uh, about a month or so ago and explained to them what I was trying to do. Uh, I guess I was on false impressions that, I, that everything was going to be okay, but for some reason uh, it didn't go the way as planned, but they denied my uh, ability to do so. So I'm coming to you guys today to explain to you guys um, what I've done. Uh, I didn't get to share this with them because I didn't have this, I wasn't prepared to, to show all this to them. Um, I also came um, and thought about myself, I want to make sure that the community is okay with it. 
So I went around and I talked to all the neighbors, knocked on doors. Some were there some, and most of them were. And I did have not got one person, not one person in that area tell me they, they would not want a uh, duplex apartment in that area. So I brought with me here That letter I wrote and all these signatures, and if you look down there, you can see Flower Ridge, Flower Ridge, Flower Ridge, Thompson. These are all people that actually live in that area. Nobody is against it. So what I'm trying to do is not create something totally out of the ordinary. What I'm trying to do is bring a home for somebody. You know, somebody that's looking for a, a, a nice home, uh, a quality home. I, the, my idea of this duplex Kind of looks like that, um, like a brick, a brick uh, surrounded building, and it would look like you know look like a regular house on one story, and it would fit right in with the rest of the community, the rest of the uh, houses in the area. Um, so I guess conclusion um, is basically that I'd really like to express to you guys that I'm not trying to. Uh, do something that's out of the ordinary, but I'm just trying to bring something in there. It's got to bring a nice home. I do have somebody here uh, that like to bring up to speak, if I could. Okay. I'm going to have Mr. Egan has a comment, oh, so sure. I'm going to let him go while you're still up here. Mr. Egan. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, this is a very unique piece of property in Ward Number Three. As Darren pointed out a few years ago, a gentleman took his life and blew up a house. And so this lot has been vacant, and it's kind of on the cusp of what I would call true residential R4 and a whole bunch of apartment buildings. When he says that he's cleaned it up, he, he has cleaned it up. One of my fears was there's a, a similar property in the town that I work uh, that has been vacant for nine, 15 years now because it's very hard to get someone to come in to a residential area and, and build a home. The, uh, the, the area just southeast, or correction, northeast of this is also a condominium complex. And so once again, we're keeping, it would have been just, I guess, to the north of where that shed is, or that building is. So we're keeping with a, uh, the, the, the things that I like about this is we're bringing new construction in, and it is conducive, or I should say continuous of what's already there. Again, it's not like going to the middle of a block and building uh, a duplex or an apartment building. Uh, regarding planning and zoning, um, Darren was, was told on Friday that he was going to appear on Monday at planning and zoning. He was not, uh, there was some sort of communication issue, so he wasn't prepared to properly speak to planning and zoning about all his plans and what he had hoped to do with this. It was turned down by planning and zoning, and uh, it was a three to two vote, if I'm correct, three in favor of it and two against, and two people weren't there, and so it was automatically brought up, well, he could return to planning and zoning, and I'll be very candid with you. Um, I, I think that uh, maybe we might have dropped the ball when we didn't give him proper notice the first time about the meeting, and, I, and well, who's to say that the same two offs people would not be absent this time? So uh, uh, I told him that if it was me, I'd come straight to the council, and I, I don't like rezoning. I've only done it one other time in the ward, and they happened to be at the pet cemetery right behind that. But when they built things in that area 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, the zoning code, I guess, wasn't in place. So to me, as far as in Ward 3, I would be very happy, and I will be supporting your bid for this. I think it's going to be a, a, a very nice structure. And understanding that he could be lying to all of us and once we approve the rezoning, you could build an apartment building. I don't think that's going to happen, but if it would happen, I still think that's conducive with where the area. That's all I have for right now. Thank you. Mr. Lee? Yeah, Mr. Regan, you want to also address the issue because I know I read in the minutes planning and zoning that the other apartments that are in there, they're, they're not... It appeared this was spot zoning because the other the other area was residential, but they are already apartment buildings. So, I mean, it's just because of pre-existing non-conforming under their thing. Right. So we're not putting a, a duplex in an area that is all re total, total residential areas, correct? 
That's true. Yeah. And, and you're, are you going to live in this property and, and are you going to rent the property or what? Well, right now, um, I have, I have idea of uh, bringing my mom back in the, to the city and, uh, she's wanting to move back home. She's been gone for a long time. So that's the main goal probably to bring her back into one of them and possibly get a home for someone else. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Hanke. Yes. Good evening. Um, I think it should be noted here, and Joe touched upon it, that there was two members of planning zoning were absent for this meeting. That doesn't guarantee that this would have been a different outcome, but very possibly it could have been a different outcome. With two, two members, you just squeaked in. So I think that should be duly noted. I think it's a positive use for this property there, uh, and you've done a lot to it already, and I think it would be uh, nothing but good for the area. I would support this. Thank you. Mr. Children. Thank you, Madam President. How you doing, Mr. Tucker? Thank you. Um, I think since I've been on council, we've flipped planning and zoning maybe twice, but uh, this is a different situation. You've done your due diligence with your neighbors, and I appreciate that. And as Mr. Egan noted, um, there could have been a little mix up on getting the word to you about, about the meeting on Monday, and that uh, you might have you know, it might have been a little different had you had a little bit more time to prepare. So um, I can see where you've done a lot of work to this property also. And uh, I'm going to trust Mr. Egan and uh, his better judgment. And I'm going to go along with him. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yeah, Dwayne, is it, what's the square footage of each home going to be? I haven't actually gone into that yet, um, but I do have kind of a uh, an idea here. You making them two I bedrooms? Didn't, I didn't go into actually the planning process yet until I get the zoning done, because what I, my goal was to to give you guys an idea before I spent the funds to actually go get an architect together and try to figure all that out. But uh, here's an idea. It's kind of a floor plan. Um, I'm looking at a two bedroom. Um, uh, duplex apartment and like I said this, that picture of that one is right this, this is the actual plans of it so it'd be a, it'd be a, a, a simple uh, two bedroom uh, on a flat uh, and uh, with a uh, nice open area nice everything on one level and what I'm trying to do is, is to make sure that, that uh, since my mom's going to be moving in there, try to make it something where it's easy for her to actually get around in. So everything will be on one level. Um, every, you know, that, that includes the you know, air, uh, washer and dryer and things like that. So I, I'm thinking probably 1,000 um, square foot maybe, maybe a little over that probably. Not sure. My house is about 1,000 square foot, so it's probably about just a little bit bigger than that for a two bedroom duplex, which would look, you know, fit perfectly on that property, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mr. Egan? Yeah, I just wanna add, Darren, if you'd be so kind, I did knock on doors up there the other day. Actually, I've been up there twice. I have not had no success in getting people that open the door for me. They're probably mm -hmm. smart that way. <laughs> uh, would you mind submitting that uh, copy of that petition for us? Yes. For permanent you record? You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to bring your other speaker up or? Yeah, if he's still willing to talk. Okay. <laughs> Good evening. Howdy. Uh, Mike O'Fallon, 1085 Campion Lane. Uh, lady and gentlemen of the council, Mr. Mayor. Um, thanks for hearing Mr. Tucker tonight. I just wanted to come on his behalf and say that uh, I've known he and his wife for about 10 years now. Um, they're fine, upstanding citizens uh, in the city here. And uh, I think it's pretty cool that uh, we get one of our own residents in Florissant that's willing to invest in another property here in the city. Um, you know, sometimes we worry about um, property managers that are out of the city or even out of the state and worried about, are they really going to care about this property? And I believe that Darren and Julie will. If you've driven by their house um, on night, um, you'd be impressed. They really keep it pristine. 
inside and out, um, they're too humble to admit it, but you know, inside and out, it's a very nice looking house and I have confidence that they'll take the same care for 22 Flower Ridge. Um, in addition, lastly, I just want to say that uh, you know, we, we talked about how this came about and uh, you know, the, the poor circumstances of the house being destroyed. And I remember being a resident of the ward there, um, I remember when that happened and driving by and I, there's just like a profound sadness that hits you when you're like, man, that, that was a hit to, to the block. That was a hit to the neighborhood. And to have it come back to life now with Darren cleaning it up and, uh, and him wanting to improve it, um, I would just wanted to express my support and vouch for his character. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see another light. Mr. Jones? Yeah, Joey's usually pretty smart about this. Uh, he's a good judgment of character. Uh, and, uh, you know, I hope this works out for you. Uh, we have some more holes uh, that need to be filled up in Florissant, too, if you'd uh, like to. Uh, <laughs> one at a time. <laughs> okay, but uh, please keep that in mind. I mean, uh, but no, we, we like to see people come back and people that are already here, like yourself. Uh, no, I, I, I'm all for it. Thank you. Thank you. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Seeing none, Councilman Egan moves to close this public hearing, seconded by Mr. Caputa. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. This public hearing is now closed. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, good luck. You've made your mom proud, I'm sure. Uh, thank you. Oh, yes, Mr. Tucker, your ordinance will be on for the first reading next meeting. What's that? I'm sorry. For the readings will be the next meeting. The next meeting? Uh -huh. what, what's the date on that? Which will be Monday. Monday. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, right. This is a special meeting because we canceled last Monday, so this Monday coming up. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. We'll now move to public hearing number 1707-022. In accordance with section... 405.310 of the Florissant Zoning Code, a public hearing will be held by the City Council of Florissant, Missouri in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue St. Francois on Tuesday, September 19, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. To authorize an amendment to special permit number 3472 to allow for an addition to a UPS, of a UPS business for the property located at 1545 South New Florissant Road. Citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs should contact the city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling you through 97630 or TDD 8395142. Well, you are present. Good evening. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pat Harden, 13, uh, 13818 Rider Trail North, Earth City, Missouri. Uh, so I'm here representing UPS. <laughs> uh, basically, what we're looking to do is install what we call a, a uh, UPS access point locker. Uh, really quickly, kind of what that is, I'll tell you the program, what the locker does, where we kind of have them, and then obviously if you guys have questions or anything, I can help you guys to understand, just let me know. What it is, is we have packages, and the idea is when a driver comes to your house and he can't leave a package for one reason or another, he usually will leave a sticker on your door, and then we'll come back the next day and try again. If we miss you, uh, next couple of days, because usually people are at work during the time we're going to try, we just say, hey, you have to come out to us. So from here, it's not too bad. It's our city, but we do have some areas that are pretty far out. So what we've done is try to create some programs and different things to put into the neighborhoods to kind of help these, uh, the citizens and the, our customers out. One of these is what we're looking to do uh, here at the Circle K right uh, down the street at South New Florissant is put in what we call an access point locker. So it's a automated system that allows us to when we do that first attempt at your house and we miss you, we'll take it down to this locker if it's in the close to that area, and we'll leave the package there for the customer to come and pick up. So that way it's, it's easy for them because it's, it's safe and secure. We're not leaving it on your doorstep. It's also great for the customer because now you can go that same day or the next day and pick it up from there, and you don't have to come all the way out to our city or take off from work or do anything else. The nice thing with the locker is it's 24 hours, um, and it's at a – a well-lit, well-traveled gas station. So, you know, obviously the locker itself is lit with uh, three cameras on it, so it's a, a safe way to pick up your package as well. We have uh, 
six right now in the metro area, three of them over, or two of them, three of them actually in the, the Missouri side. We've got one off Lucas and Hunt by Highway 70, one off St. Charles Rock Road uh, just by 170, and the other one down on Olive just east of 170 as well. So it's not anything that's totally new to the, the St. Louis area, but it'll be the first one kind of in the fluorescent Hazelwood kind of area. So that's kind of the, the program and what we do. Hey, I'm open to whatever you guys would like to know about it. Mr. Childreth. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Harden, how are you doing? I'm doing well, so. Good. Um, could you take me to, through the process? Um, say I get something and I'm at home and how am I notified by email? Uh, can you take me through the whole process? Yeah, not a problem. So there's a couple different ways. The first one's uh, anytime we can't leave a package at somebody's house, we leave the, the paper slip, which we call an info notice, and that'll have a special number on it. So you can use that to track, uh, and you can use that at the locker as well. Or we have a program that's more online called UPS My Choice, and that'll send you alerts of how the package is traveling. So it's being delivered today, it's been delivered, we attempted whatever, and that'll come electronically, email or text. From there, once it's either self-directed to the locker because that's where you want it to go, or we directed there when we couldn't make the delivery to your house, you can either take the My Choice, we'll email you a barcode, or you take that info notice, the paper slip, down to the locker, you'd scan it in, uh, then it would try and read your ID, you'd insert your ID, try and read your ID, match addresses to the delivery address to what your ID is. If that doesn't work or your ID is new because you just moved in, you can put in your cell phone number. It'll try and match billing records to your address. If that doesn't work, we actually have a call for help button that you hit and it'll dial customer service person and then you can talk to them directly, show them your ID, kind of work it out. And then, uh, and then once they've confirmed who you are and everything, the, lock, they can, the locker will pop open, you can retrieve your package. It only pops open one doorway at a time. How many lockers will there, will there be there? So this one on, I believe it'll be like 68 bay. So it'll be a little bit bigger one, but it'll be able to serve, you know, some pretty dense area as well. And how, how deep are the lockers? I mean, what kind? So we have three different sizes. They're all about the same two feet, give or take, in depth, but we have small ones that are probably six inches tall. Then we have some medium, large, and then extra large, just depending on your package size. Uh, it'll fit most standard stuff that you, you know, people would be ordering from Amazon, but it won't fit. We can't put hazmats in there, or we won't put anything of extreme high value, or anything that's obviously very big, like tires or TVs. You know, if it won't fit, we won't put it in there. When will the uh, UPS staff um, fill the lockers? Will that be? later in the evening once it ships over? So it's on their route, so the total base way is somebody will come out the next day, so we try and, try and find my words, I wanna say it. So what happens is the drivers will go around, they'll make the deliveries, and the old way was they bring it back, and then the next day our, we'd put it on a, somebody's route, and they take it out there in the morning, drop it off, and it'd be available to pick up at about 10 o'clock that next morning. We're working on tweaking the routes so we can do it same day, which is better for our customers. So as they make those deliveries at two in the afternoon, then when they come around at five o'clock in the afternoon, they can drop their package off at the locker and then it's available that same night as you got it, as the customer was supposed to get at the same time. So there'll be one driver for sure that goes there every day. And then as we kind of tweak the routes and try and optimize it, you could have couple drivers coming throughout their day, but it, it definitely won't be a, a parade of trucks at one time. Okay, um, and finally, I, I have had residents who are concerned when they're not home, especially around the holiday season when they're getting deliveries. So um, I'm in support of this project and I appreciate you coming to Florissant. That's all I have for you now, Mr. Harden. Thank you. Mr. Parson. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, Mr. Harden, um, I, first of all, I, I appreciate the convenience of, uh, of this whole process. I, I can't tell you how much I despise getting that little note on my door and having to wait 
the next day to get up whatever my package is. So I really appreciate the convenience of this. However, I, I do have a concern about this particular location. Um, I know this gas station, which has the, the car wash, already gets a, a lot of traffic, and I'm concerned about how this additional traffic with the, with the UPS lockers is going to affect uh, this particular area. Uh, so can you kind of explain how much you know, traffic this may normally ger generate um, on this type of a business? Uh, so usually per day what we put in there, uh, we like to put maybe 15 to 20 packages a day is what we'd like to put. It depends obviously on what we're delivering the area. The, the packages themselves are, they'll go in, they stay in there for seven days, and then at, after seven days they'll highlight for us and we'll go and pick them up, pull them out, return them to sender. So, while there is some traffic generated, it can be spread out across up to seven days at any time with 24 hours. So, you know, I know we'll work with the, the gas station and allow, it's up to them if they want to stripe or make big changes to the, their parking and their structure. I do know they got some spots that are there and they got some parking down uh, like by the street inside of their lot, but we'll, we'll kind of work with them to talk with them and see what they're doing and see what we can do to help. But the ultimate decision, how they want to change the lot will be their call. But it does allow customers convenience to pick it up at their own time and whenever it's maybe not as busy. So if you know it's, as an example, I know it's busy at 8 o'clock in the morning when everyone's getting coffee and gas. Maybe I come by at lunch at 11.30 or 12 when it's not so busy. Package will be there and I have up to a week to do that. So I could come on Saturday. If if it makes more sense for me. Okay. So, so you, you had already talked to the gas station about trying to, to restripe things, because I don't think there's very many parking spaces there at, as for now. That was that was mentioned. It was kind of an unofficial mention at the, the building commission um, meeting. So we kind of took that back to them and just said, hey, this is a concern. It's, to, it's, up, it's up to them and the owners of the gas station to decide how they want to control the flow of traffic there. But we passed the concerns along that were given to us back to them and let them know and it sounds like from everything I know it sounds like they're okay with it and they understand what's going on and as they see things we'll make the updates to better their business as well. Okay I have one additional question and, and looking at some of the doc documents that were submitted to us it states that um, the lockers need to be on uh, basically a level area um, and I, you know, I frequent this gas station, so I know the part right by the car wash is kind of on a slope. So I was wondering how you guys plan to remedy that, that issue. We will usually take out the landscaping there. And I know we had the building commission said for anything we took out, we needed to replace or relocate. We usually clear it out, put in a new concrete base in and level it out there. So, and then obviously update the landscaping to make it it work around that. So even if it is on a slight slope or listing left or right, when we put the concrete pad in, we can level it off and then the machine itself will be perfectly flat. And then obviously if we tear any bushes out per the building commission, we'd have to replant them somewhere else on the property. Okay, okay, and I'm sorry, something else just came to mind. How, how long will it take uh, to, to complete this whole process if you guys are approved? Uh, the installation, I've seen them do it from anywhere in like two to three days to maybe doing little bits and pieces over a week, uh, but that's usually uh, very much off a parking lot up next to a building, a safe area. We had one where they, they poured the pad, gave the pad a day to dry, and then put the lockers themselves in in probably a day at one of our facilities. So they, if they need to be in the, the circumstance dictates that they can be very fast to install it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arden. Mr. Hankey? Yes, good evening. <clears throat> Maybe you said this and I just missed it. Uh, is redelivery, okay, you said the customer can and say either online or they take their slip down to this locker, mm -hmm. okay? Is redelivery back to their house an option for them also? They can. They, uh, if they call us and say they want it redelivered to their house or to another uh, UPS store or some other location, they can give us a call and let us know. It does add a day to the delivery because we'd have to go out there, pick it up, bring it back, but we can. Okay, do I just that want to make sure that it was an option 
outside of this locker if the person didn't want to they say, I'll be home tomorrow or whatever the case may be. It would be an option for them to get it re-delivered. Yeah, they just right. would have to call us and let us know. Thank you. Mr. Siam. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I actually had a question that was similar to uh, what uh, Mr. Parson was asking a few minutes ago, and that was actually about the traffic and the gas station. I just wanted to be sure the, the or ask if you had been sure that the lockers would be thin enough that they would not impede the flow of traffic in that area or that people standing in front of them would not impede the flow of traffic, especially if there was like some kind of line that developed there or anything like that, or if, that they would not be in any danger even from being hit by a car or anything like that. Yeah, well, I don't know the, obviously specifically what they do here, but what we do in the past is the lockers are only two feet deep in total, so they'll be two feet up against that building right there. Uh, and then what we usually do to protect the, whoever's using it and protect the, the equipment as well as put bollards, concrete bollards out in front of it. Okay, so okay. while we might take a little bit of room from where the current curb is to install that bollard, it won't be hanging out there and they'll be, they'll be painted bright yellow. It, it won't be easy to miss. Thank you. That's all I have. All right. Mr. Harton, I probably should have asked this earlier. Do you have a picture of that drawing just so the people in our audience know what we're talking about? I, yeah, I'm I sorry. A that picture was... on my phone I can bring up. Um, I think I have one of my plans, or if somebody has their plans handy, that <laughs> you can just grab me. <laughs> that, I, do, I just don't think people, I don't know if that's good. Well, so this is one of the ones that we have. In... Yeah, we do. Thank you, Mr. Lee. I'm sorry. I should have asked earlier. <laughs> but it's working. Thank you. All right. So that's the sketch there. The other one was a picture of the of one of the ones we have installed in Kansas City. So, but this is obviously the sketch of how it'll look. So there'll be bollards and uh, some other stuff that are obviously protecting customers and learning vehicles as well. And then they should, it should be ADA compliant as well as everything else. So they'll, they usually make those updates when they do, do the, tear the stuff out and pour the pad in. They make sure it's up to all the standards that it, it needs to meet. Okay. Mr. Jones? Yeah, are we going to have cameras on this? And have we had any problems uh, in the past where these are in other cities that people have broken into them? There are, uh, there's three cameras. There's uh, one on the far right corner. One pretty much hanging right above your head when you use the equipment, and then there's a small like ATM kind of pinhole camera right in the front. Uh, they're designed to be graffiti resistant, and they'll hold up pretty well in the St. Louis area. I've not, or in the four states that I cover, so uh, Missouri, Iowa, Kansas, Arkansas, and the western part of Illinois, we have about 13 in place right now, and I have not had a single incident so far with them as far as. Uh, anybody trying to mess with it or trying to rob anything. Uh, and the cameras do work. We've had a couple of requests from our security group and law enforcement to provide video from, you know, if, if something sure. happened around there and somebody ran across, so. So that's your video equipment, not the, the gas stations, correct? Yes, that'll be ours. All right, thanks. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yeah, on, on the plans you have two Two sets, a wall mounted and a slab mounted, correct? Well, it usually will, it'll sit on a slab and then we'll get it as close to the wall as possible because we'll pull power from the, um, the car wash and run it across there. So most of them, when they sit there, they it's two feet depth total and they'll be about maybe three, four inches off that wall as well. But they, I, So basically the whole thing is just sitting on a slab it's not bolted or to bolted my, to the wall or sorry. bolted to the concrete or poured in place to my understanding with the plans I've seen before they do bolt them into the, the concrete underneath but you don't know which one they're gonna do correct? I can find out for this one specifically but uh, the all the other ones that I've seen for the plans for the other Places have shown uh, bolting into the pad into below. the slab itself. Yeah, because it don't show it on the plans. Okay, I can. Have. 
I can make sure to get the yeah, just, anything you know, and get it back over email to you. Email me, let me know. That'd be yep. fine. <laughs> All right. Mr. Egan? My question's been answered. I think it's a great idea. Before we oh, <laughs> turn your light on. Will it be painted like that picture that you showed? Yes, it'll be very similar to that. That'll be the base look, and then we do brand it with a, a UPS shield, and it'll say UPS access point and a couple of the other items on there. But it, they all look, all of them pretty much look exactly the same as the one I, I put on, show the photo of. UPS colors. Yeah, brown, brown and yellow with the. Maybe black for the writing. All right, that's it. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Lee? Yeah, Mr. Caputo, I also think once it's approved, I think they're still gonna have to submit building permits and and that's where that's where they'll determine it's gonna be bolted and, and meet all the requirements as far as the bullards and things. So I think that'll end up in another process too. So I, it city to city it depends on the process city to city, so I'm not I'm not familiar with how it works for you guys, but I know we have a a group that does submit all the permits and the needs as as, as required by the city. Mr. Jones? Yeah, we're not gonna have a picture of our mayor on there or nothing like that, right? I mean, we might be able to accommodate, but no, no. Well, I'm just be. making sure that doesn't happen, you know what I mean? Mr. Hankey? Yeah, uh, maybe this will clear up or, or answer a question, Jeff. It's in these plans here. I get to read them without my cheaters, but I could read them in here. It says, it says in both cases, whether it be a locker, a wall mount, or a mount, that the appropriate anchors will be in place. It's in this page. <laughs> <That's not true. laughs> but it does state it's stated in there about the anchors. Just <laughs> I'm just giving you a second to think of more. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Good evening. Is it? Oh, uh, good evening. My name is Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane. Uh, my, my main, one of my main questions is, I was looking at the, uh, on the left side, and I couldn't see any kind of, uh, on the agenda, and I couldn't see any kind of uh, plan. I mean, I guess this is gonna be on the right side of the building. I mean, it, we don't have any kind of plans about what it's gonna be. Will that come up in the future? And another thing I was wondering, I've gotten two packages in the last two weeks from UPS, one today at 11.47 p.m. And it, it was scanned and it was dropped off on my porch. The one last week was dropped off on my porch. Uh, I've never, in probably the past 10 years or so, maybe longer, have ever gotten a, a receipt on the door, only from FedEx. And it's only from things that have to be signed for. So I was wondering, is this going to be, uh, a type of thing you have to subscribe to when you order something or when you pick something up or is it gonna be automatic from now on? Will they automatically ship it there and tell you where it's gonna be or do you have to pay for it like a uh, USPS uh, post office box? I, be po post I believe office Mr. Box Harden an answered that question that you have a choice. Can you wanna come up that you would have a choice where it was going to be delivered to? Another thing was, uh, I noticed that they also, um, you know, when I get when I got the packages delivered, they scan them automatically. They ring the doorbell, and, and they must be track runners because, but it, I mean, I'm, I'm slow anyway getting to the door lately. But uh, by the time I get to the door, there's not even a truck in sight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, they don't. But I have noticed that when I when I purchase things, that they offer me the opportunity to have it delivered. To a uh, to a center over at Earth City to pick it up. So I was wondering if that was the same thing. Is there going to be a charge for it? Because I can't see anything wrong with this this the situation with this new thing. Because I have a post office box. 
And when I pull up in front of the post office, I get out, three minutes, I, got, I open the box, get my mail out, close the box, I'm back in my car in three minutes. Okay, it can't, it's gotta be quicker than that. So I mean, there shouldn't be a, a big reason to have a lot of parking spaces there, for one thing. The second thing is, I just wanna know what's the cost on this gonna be and how do we pay for it? Is it a free service from UPS or is it a, or do we, or do we get charged for it on, is it a special, special deal? Mr. Harden, you want to stand? Can you answer his question for me? Thank you. So uh, a couple of different ones. So the the porch release is what we call driver release. So in certain neighborhoods, if we know it's safe and it's we never had problems there before, we can release it to your doorstep. We try our best to try and hide it and keep it out of sight, but we can release it there. In certain areas, if we can't DR because of safety or theft or any other reasons, or because it's a package where we need a signature or it's any meets another criteria, we can't just leave it, that's when we won't deliver it and we'll leave the sticker. So most things like Amazon, we can DR and we'll just leave it at your porch and go from there. But there are some neighborhoods, or especially apartment complexes, where we cannot because the, the risk of theft is very high and this is another option for that. Uh, this is a, a free service, uh, so in UPS My Choice, it, it's a base free service, and as long as you direct it, either if we direct it there, it's, it's free, or if you self-direct it there, as long as it's in close to your area, it's going to be free. Um, and we do have paid levels, or if you're trying to redirect it from like here to Kansas City, there might be a cost associated with it, but in that town, it'll be ground. free. Yeah, yeah, so I, the shipping, this is separate from the shipping cost itself. Whatever you pay to Amazon is whatever they want to charge you for shipping. Uh, and then my choice is more on the customer end, and that'll be, we have free levels and pay levels, but usually a redirect as long as it's in, the, where it's in an area where it's being delivered originally is going to be kind of a free redirect, but those services, you know, some services are charged, but this one specifically is free. And then the, the drivers, especially on porch release, it's definitely go, go, go. As long as it's safe and good, they're going to get to the next one. <laughs> All right. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further comments, Mr. Childreth moves to close this public hearing, seconded by Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. This public hearing is now closed. Thank you, Mr. Harden. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is old business. The first item under old business is second readings. We have bill number 9303. Councilman Childress moves for a second reading, seconded by Mr. Hankey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance authorizing an amendment to B5 ordinance number 7582 to allow for an exterior exterior alterations, including a blade sign for the property located at 1232 Grammar. Councilman Childress moves for a third reading, seconded by Mr. Parson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance authorizing an amendment to B5 ordinance number 7582 to allow for exterior alterations, including a blade sign for the property located at 1232 Graham Road. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this bill? Good evening, Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane. Just one question, and I asked Mr. Schildroth this last week. I was curious of how soon is this A&W gonna be uh, available? I know that they're talking about the blade sign and everything. I just, I haven't heard anything about when they're gonna do this. As soon as they get the blade sign up, does that mean they're gonna start serving uh, mama burgers, papa burgers, and baby burgers and stuff? Right oh, they are? Okay, thank you. That's, that was my only question. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no further comments, clerk, please pull the council. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Huda? Yes. Childreth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Bill number 9303 passes and becomes ordinance number 8343. Bill number 9304, Councilman Egan, moves for a second reading, 
Seconded by Mr. Lee. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance to approve the final subdivision plat of St. Sophia, dividing one lot into two lots for the property located at 936 Charbonnier Road. Councilman Egan moves for a third reading, seconded by Mr. Caputa. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance to approve the final subdivision plat for St. Sophia, dividing one lot into two lots for the property located at 936 Charbonnier Road. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Bill number 9304 passes and becomes ordinance number 8344. Bill number 9305. Councilman Siam moves for a second reading, seconded by Mr. Hankey. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance to authorize a special permit for a digital sign for the property located at 2040 North Highway 67. Councilman Siam moves for a third reading, seconded by Mr. Hankey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance to authorize a special permit for a digital sign for the property located at 2040 North Highway 67. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak on this? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Puda? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Bill number 9305 passes and becomes ordinance number 8345. Bill number 9307. I will move for a second reading, seconded by Mr. Caputa. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance of appropriating the community development block grant funds for the 2017 fiscal year for the city of Florissant. I will move for a third reading, seconded by Mr. Siam. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance appropriating the community development block grant funds for the 2017 fiscal year for the city of Florissant. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this bill? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Are you sure? <laughs> Lee? Yes. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. I am. Bill number 9307 passes and becomes ordinance number 8346. Ms. O'Mara, you're off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> the next item on the agenda is new business. The first item under new business is board appointments. Mr. Hankey? Yes, I'd like to put forth the name of Patty Sosa, 690 St. Francis, for the Landmark Historic District Commission. Seconded by Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The appointment is made. Mr. Parson? Yes, I'd like to uh, reappoint Loretta Ashford to the Citizens Participation um, Commission. Seconded by Mr. Childreth. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The appointment is made. No one else down there. Mayor? Yeah, thank you, Madam President. I'd like to appoint these two sisters from Ward 2, uh, Nadia Williams and Nalani Williams, to the Youth Advisory Commission. I will move to approve the mayor's appointment, seconded by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The appointment is made. Next, we will move to first readings. We have Bill Number 9308. Ordinance to authorize an amendment to special permit number 3472 to allow for an addition of a UPS business for the property located at 1545 South and Florissant Road. Bill number 9309. Ordinance authorizing an appropriation of $900,000 from general revenue fund to account number 4050 professional services to cover expenses from a class action agreement. The next item on the agenda is council announcements. Do you need 
Do you want to explain that now or next meeting? Monday? Okay. Of lights. <laughs> I know they all came on at once. So you have to tell me if yours you you're on too. We'll go with you first, Mr. Parson. Thank you, uh, Madam President. I just want to um, make an announcement about a, uh, a foundation that I became aware of that um, um, that started right here in Florissant, called, called the Quasi Prince Foundation. They are um, an organization that tries to combat pediatric cancer. Um, they're dedicated to providing support to families that are suffering from those effects of childhood cancer with their main focus on brain tumors. On uh, December the 10th, at, from 9 to 11 a.m., they're having a, a free pancake breakfast at the uh, James J. Egan Center. Um, once again, it's a free pancakes. How can you beat that? But. Um, <laughs> They are accepting donations, of course, um, during the breakfast, but I feel it is a uh, worthwhile cause. The, um, the initial founder of this organization's son died of a, a brain tumor. Um, he lives in Ward Number 7, and his son attended Combs Elementary School. So really, really touching story, but I just wanted to make sure that everyone was uh, aware of this, and if you could attend, please attend. The other thing is, is I just want to follow up on um, the Florissant Five. I still want to encourage people to get to know their neighbors, um, go by and, and, and speak with them, see what's going on with them. Uh, that way it, it will make your neighborhood safer. So please and uh, go out and know, know your Florissant Five. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Children. Thank you, Madam President. I would still like to ask people to have patience on Graham Road. Uh, with the MSD project, there's one lane closed down going towards St. Ferdinand Park. Uh, unfortunately, the contractor ran into a problem uh, with a water main, and that project will hopefully be wrapped, wrapped up in about another month and a half. Uh, the project on Washington, the concrete replacement is 70% complete, and we thank St. Louis County for doing that, but please still be patient. Uh, Mrs. Pagano and I had a ward meeting uh, last week and it was very well attended and I want to thank everybody for being there. It was very informative. Uh, the fall festival is coming up on October 8th, our 20th year. I know Mr. Lee will probably talk about it. The only thing I really care about with the fall festival is winning the chili cook-off. Uh -huh, so if again. I don't win this year, no. Yep. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I attended a really nice 9-11 ceremony last week, and there was uh, very well attended. Uh, VFW on St. Francis Street did it, and I'd like to congratulate Mr. Parson. He by far was the best speaker. It was very well done, sir. He's still not going to vote for your chili. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good try, but no. Mr. Egan, thank you for your service. I know you're working long hours, and I'd like to thank our Larson Police Department for our guys working 12 hour shifts and thank the chief for all his dedication to our, our situation that we have right now. And finally, on a lighter note, I would like to wish happy birthday to my granddaughter Morgan. She's five years old today uh -huh. and she's a student at Sacred Heart. Uh -huh. Happy birthday, Morgan. Happy birthday. Good job, Grandpa. Mr. Lee. Thank you. First of all, I'd just like to comment on the new sound system. I don't know about Mr. Egan, but this is the first meeting that I've heard everything like in two years. So, I mean, this is just really, really nice. I'm glad we have it in. Mr. Schilder, I talked about the Fall Festival on, on Oct Sunday, October 8th. Um, just want to remind everybody we've got a full day of activities planned. It'll be a great event. Mr. Parson, just, we've never officially told you this, but the new council person is always in charge of the weather. So you, you're going to be in charge of the weather that day. We would like to have not too... Not too cool, but not too hot either. 70 would be okay. Yeah, we do that. And sunny. So we'll get the request in now. Also, on the chili cook-off, I want to remind everybody that it's, it's, the winner is based upon who stuffs the ballot box the most. So your family could buy 150 worth of tickets. All that money goes straight to the Fall Festival Committee. So that would be a great thing as well. So, And on a serious note, uh, I want to be the first to... Um, 
congratulate Mr. Hessel, who's been named by the Best Lawyers in America as a Lawyer of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, but in reading the, the thing, I realized that this is kind of an old deal for him because he's been named in 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, I think. So, uh, but <laughs> congratulations, and uh, it, I think it just shows the people that are uh, yeah. <laughs> your colleagues and that that recognize work you do, and I know we certainly do, so congratulations. Mr. Jones. Yes, uh, I'd like to say uh, that I'm not happy with our trash contractor. Uh, I'm still waiting for a mailing when uh, their superintendent, Chuck, came up and spoke to us some time back, said there was going to be a mailing out of the last contract we negotiated with them to let the residents know everything that we did for them. So we're still waiting on that. Hopefully the mayor will step on his shoes a little bit and make sure that that is mailed out by Chuck Barkham. On a positive side, team is right down the street, you guys. Please keep it in mind. It's our food pantry. There's always somebody hungry morning, noon, or night. Or if you got some extra hours, go down there and participate. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Egan? Thank you very, very much. The Florissant Police Department Benevolent Golf Tournament is the 29th of September, which is a week from this Friday. If you want to get a foursome in, call Randy Bowden. If you want to... Uh, sponsor a hole like the council, and I believe the mayor is, and Mr. Lee and myself, we're all sponsoring holes. You can still call Randy Bowden and do that. It, it goes towards the welfare of the police officers, not only the Florissant Police, but they do write checks to officers from other communities when they're in, in a time of need. Uh, since uh, we are in a time of need right now, and a lot of community has come out and donated uh, money and goods to the Florissant Police Department and police departments around the area to help deal with the um, current strife we're, we're experiencing in the area from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you've reached in and given a couple dollars or a case of water or something on that lines is very important. Keep these men and women in your, in your hearts and prayers. No matter how you feel about what happened, uh, let's hope that our first responders will go home at the end of the night. And last but not least, uh, my son-in-law Dan Ellerbush passed Missouri Bar this week, so hopefully he'll get a job soon and, uh, and be on his way to a career of lawyering. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Lawyer of the Year, yeah. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, um, over, the pan over the weekend, they had the, um, the suicide prevention, 5K walk and run, um, softball tournament, very successful. This was probably the best one they ever had, in a, and I believe this is, I'm not really sure how many years they've been having this, but this has been the, the best one they ever had. Uh, the, Last year they had like 80 racers and walkers. This year they had 250. So they, um, plus a, a hundred of the family and friends of them. So they, 350 total for the race. That's, that's triple the amount they had. Um, 425 spectators all together, 221 softball players. So it was very successful compared to the past couple years. Um, another thing, firearms, you own a firearm, make sure you um, secure them in your vehicle. Don't leave them in your vehicle. Can't let them firearms get stolen. So make sure you secure them vehicles or, and the firearms. Um, another thing, I know the past few weeks, Florissant has been in the newspaper by a certain... Um, Journalists, and I know we've been getting a black eye lately, and it's it's sad that we are doing. You know, I think we need an explanation of what happened with this um, this job. I know we never knew about it until the day it happened or afterwards. I think we should have been consulted with it first. But we knew the public, or the, the, the citizens knew it before we did, and the public. And I don't think that's right. I think we should have known about it beforehand so we can have our input. I think it was, we need an explanation. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor? Yeah, we had a very uh, successful uh, uh, disc golf tournament on September the 9th, had uh, record turnout over 40 players. 
want to congratulate uh, Mr. Parsons uh, for a very successful uh, Prince Hall American Mism Parade. Uh, great weather, and it seemed like a lot of people on the parade route knew you. It was, it was very, very, uh, very, in, in a very enjoyable parade. We had a successful uh, town hall meeting uh, last week with the seniors at the Egan Center. And I'm very happy to announce that the uh, Christian Hospital Northeast, uh, Northwest, uh, they are going to be investing in a new Siteman Cancer Center scheduled to open in Florissant in 2019 at the Christian Northwest uh, location. Uh, this is going to be a huge investment, $20 million satellite facility, and we're very proud uh, to be the home of that new Siteman Cancer Center. And that's all I got. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure. Thank you. The next regular meeting of the Florida City Council will be on this Monday evening, September 25th, 2017. Councilman Caputa moves to adjourn, seconded by Mr. Hanke. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried and the meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for attending.